Hello there, and welcome back to my painting channel. Today we have something a little bit different altogether. Today we're going to be painting a princess and a frog. These two miniatures are from the Talisman again, but we're going to do something a little bit different today. And I'm going to kind of give you a little bit of a, a showcase or um, a little bit of a a show of some of the miniatures that I've already painted. And these are being painted for a friend called uh, Ukash. Uh, this is his game, so we're painting these guys up on request. And we're going to start out with our nice yellow skin orc. Yellow is always a difficult colour to paint, so having a miniature where you're painting the whole skin yellow was, uh, was quite a fun little challenge and something a little bit more unique than just doing green skins all of the time. Some of these miniatures are absolutely tiny as well, like this uh, little leprechaun here. He's a very, very small miniature and probably one of the smallest miniatures I think I've painted to date, uh, which creates uh, an entirely new kind of challenge. But there's a lot of character with the miniatures. They are a little bit um, almost sort of old school in a way, where they look a little bit more, um, I want to say old fashioned, but a little bit more vintage in their style, uh, like this gladiator here. Who's going to stand out quite well on the table with his golden armor shining? And again, it's nice to have a miniature with quite a lot of um, skin on so that um, you, you can practice and, and play about with your skin tones and things like that. Same here, we've got our, our knight. Um, the interesting thing with our knight is there's a slight difference between the silver on his armor to the silver on his shield, so trying to create a little bit of a different tone to the silver was... Um, that was also quite, uh, quite fun to do, quite different to do. Grim Reaper here. Um, our little Grim Reaper was painted grey rather than the sepia tones on the picture. Uh, and again, that was done by request. Um, and he's a cool looking little deathly visage. He's a, a, a full of character, you know, a cool little guy. We have an amazing Amazon or Amazonian uh, here. And again, plenty of skin to practice those skin tones and to play about getting uh, some nice bright light colours with. Um, lots of character again in areas where uh, we could paint sort of different, try to paint some different colours. Again some of these miniatures are so small uh, that you try and your, your best to, to get your paintbrush um, into these little, little areas but they're so small that uh, sometimes it can be a little bit of guesswork. We've got our mage here. I think I probably missed the opportunity to do a little bit of OCL, but again, I just didn't want to try to go too extreme and, and ruin sort of uh, the miniatures for a friend. So trying to just keep them as, as close to the, uh, the artwork on the cards as possible. Like our little tinkerer here. He's got his little owl who's a little bit like Bubo uh, from Clash of the Titans. Thankfully that's at a revamp, otherwise I'd be showing off my age, knowing about uh, growing up watching the original, so... Um, yeah. And this was a really fun little one to paint, uh, this little elf. Uh, trying to get those blue tones on the clothing was... Um, that, that was rather unique, that was... Um, that was really, really difficult, but uh, the reward is just as good. We've got our little priest here, or friar here. He's using all sort of khaki colours on his robe, um, which you've probably seen me use khaki colours before, like uh, when I painted Nelly from Zombicide in a previous video. It's the same sort of uh, effect and textures. And we've got our green-skinned ghoul. I didn't quite get the green skin the exact same colour. There's a lot of different kinds of greens and things like that and textures that you can use to get different colours. And this one looks good. He's not exactly the same, but he's still got a lot of character and he still looks a little bit... Um, uh, a little bit sort of mouldy. And we've got our barmaid here bringing around the beers, which is always a good sight to see. Uh, we do enjoy around the beers. So yeah, there's, there's just a few that I've painted so far, and there's quite a lot more to go. But today, as I said, we're going to paint the uh, the princess, the little uh, sort of um, wizard or, or mage kind of character, where she's holding a little golden orb. Uh, so she's going to be in a nice blue dress. The challenge is going to be getting that gold trim, but we'll take a look at that in a moment. And of course the frog as well, can't forget the frog. So, like I always like to do, I'm just going to start off with the skin tones. Got a nice thin coat of uh, K2 
Kislev Flash from Citadel. Uh, Kislev Flash, as I tend to use quite often as a base colour, is quite a nice light colour to begin with, so you're not going to end up with a really dark colour that you've got to try to highlight afterwards. This is a really nice light colour that I use as the mid tone. Um, tends to mean that your miniatures then the skin colour kind of pops and it's quite bright and you can see the miniature on the table quite quite nicely. Uh, there's different ways to do skin and I'll show you a couple of other ways as well um, in other videos. So as I said the challenge with this is going to be trying to um, get this gold trim. So because the gold trim is quite it is, it's quite small and it's in very, very difficult to reach unique places. What I'm going to do is I'm going to paint the gold first and then go around with the blue. Because the gold is so thin, it doesn't matter if I hit a little bit of the dress because I can go over the dress with the blue as opposed to painting the blue then trying to get that very, very thin line of gold which might become a little bit more um, difficult or a little bit more tedious. Um, so for that I'm using the Retributor armor from uh, Citadel and then I'm moving on to using the Vallejo Pastel Blue uh, for the dress um, and this is a really nice light tone sort of, well as I said it's a pastel blue um, and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to paint across the dress and then I'm just going to tidy up all of the bits of the dress where the gold has sat so if the gold has gone between the um, those uh, very fine sort of ridges onto the dress then we can cover that up and fix those fix those mistakes now with this layer all we're going to do we're just going to be as, as careful as we can not to get the blue over those um, gold trims so we're going to fix it but we're going to be very very careful as you can see we're just going to take our time and just try to get that blue color there we go, to cover some of the gold bits that we may have missed. Again, like I was saying right at the beginning, these are very, very small, fine, fiddly figures, so they can be quite difficult to get the brush into the exact areas and things like that. And for me, my eyes aren't the best, so I'm trying my best to get in as, as much as I can. But um, yeah, these are, these are a unique challenge. Uh, to say the least. So, with that in mind, we're just going to move across and use a uh, flesh wash from Army Painter. You can use a Reichland flesh shade from Citadel as well if you like. They're both equally as good. It's just a matter of personal choice. Um, for the dress, however, I am using an Army Painter blue tone. Um, and why I'm using this as opposed to a Citadel is because the Army Painter blue tone seems to be quite thin. Um, so it darkens in the recesses, but it doesn't darken the dress too much. Whereas if you use the Citadel version, like a Dragonoff Nightshade, it's actually very dark, so it will darken your miniature quite a lot. Again, it's personal choice. You could use a Dragonoff Nightshade and then lighten it up as, as and when, uh, as you go. Uh, but for me personally, I preferred using the uh, Blue Tone from Army Painter, just because it doesn't darken the miniature down too much. It actually uh, keeps the um, it actually keeps the mid tones quite nicely. So when we go back and we paint those mid tones out, um, the, the the contrast will be quite even rather than too extreme. So once we've done that, we're just going to move back and try to build up some of those colours that we've washed down a little. So I'm going to start off by going to the skin tone and the Kislev flesh that we used to begin with. Now that the wash has dried in the recesses, we're just going to hit the um, the highlighted points, so the cheeks, the the forehead, um, the nose, the chin, just across the chest and across the shoulders, the hands. So we're just going to take our time and try to use the very very tip of our brush here, just to to kind of catch the, the areas where the highlight would be and just paint that back in. Um, because this is the tone and the colour that we started with when we paint this back up, this is going to be, obviously, I like to thin my paint, so you want to make sure that your paints are nice and thin, so when you paint this back on, it dries in a way that it looks naturally toned. Um, and that way you don't have just a really light splodge just sat right in the centre. 
Um, so yeah, that's that's how I tend to like to, to, to paint the skin is a nice thin tone back on top. So for that then we're gonna go and highlight again. So instead of jumping straight up in like a full uh, color, uh, we're gonna mix the color together. So this one we're gonna use the Kislev flesh and the Flayed One flesh at a 50-50 mix. And we're just gonna pick out on the really, really, really edges. So the really, really fine highlights. And again, with this being thin, when this dries, it's gonna be a nice transition and a nice natural tone through. And again, it's just across the forehead, just across the nose, maybe the very edges of the cheeks, um, across the chest and things like that. So once the skin is done, um, I'm gonna leave the skin there. I mean, you could tone that up again and just use flayed one flesh if you wanted like an extreme highlight. That's completely up to you. And it's a nice way to tone up rather than jump in a full color, but to mix your colors together so that you've got an in-between and to build up and go from there. So for this one, we're having a nice golden blonde uh, head of hair. We're gonna go on to a Vallejo gold yellow, which is quite aptly named. Uh, for the colour that this is. So this is going to be a nice bright colourful golden yellow and I'm going to paint the orb the same colour at the same time as well. So while I'm waiting for that to dry or while that part is done I'm going to move back to the Retributor armour that I used for the um, uh, for, for the, um, the trim, the golden trim on the dress. I'm just going to try my best now to pick out. This is a little bit that I forgot to paint originally so I'm just going to try to, to highlight that back up. I'm just going to use that gold to just hit some of the trim to bring some of the colour back because I've used the wash over the top of this it may have darkened slightly so I'm just going to bring that shine back up by uh, by hitting some of the edges here as you'll see just on the side. You don't have to follow the whole thing again um, just by hitting certain parts will allow it to um, to glow in certain areas which will catch your eye and the miniature will, will shine in its own little way. So once we've done the gold, I'm going to move back to the pastel blue and we're just going to try to follow the lines of the dress down but we're going to leave that blue in the recessed areas. So there we go, we're just going to follow that dress and hit the, the, the points where the light would be sitting on top of the dress. Um, but we're just going to leave that, that, that deeper blue, that, that blue shade just sitting in the recessed points in the pooled areas. And we're going to leave little gaps here and there to just simulate uh, sort of extra folds in the dress and of course we don't want this colour to be too flat and then take away from the uh, the flow and the motion of the miniatures so we just add in a few little uh, bits in to, to, to kind of create that illusion of folds and things in the cloth you see I'm just trying to leave little gaps and things like that. Again with this being watered down and thinned down this is going to be, um, it'll dry quite nicely so if there are like a little bit of mistakes I'm not going to notice too much because of the way that the miniature is so small and the way that um, you, you're just highlighting the colours back up so you've got the blue sitting in the darker parts, you've got the, the nice pastel colour then as the, the mid-tone and the light and then we'll highlight that further in a minute. So just try to be as careful as possible, take your time. I mean, you can make mistakes and then fix them up. You'll notice with some of my paintings, I do make mistakes and things, you know, no one can paint perfect all the time. And it's all a learning curve as well. You know, for me, painting is all about learning how to paint new, new ways and new color tones and new mixtures and all things like that. So mistakes sometimes can be fun because you'll learn from them. And there we go, just going to move on and use the uh, the highlight. So we're using that pastel blue again. But what we're going to do as a highlight for that pastel blue is we are going to mix that with a Vallejo dead white, um, which is quite a bright white. So we're just going to use like a 50-50 mix again just to get this pastel blue to be a little bit more highlighted. And like we did with the skin, we're just going to hit the most 
raised in the most um, prominent parts of the body. So just across the chest, as you see, just down some of the lines of the uh, of the dress. And as you notice, I'm not covering the whole dress. I'm just putting little flicks of lines across because again, we create in that uh, illusion of folds and depth to the miniature that may not be 100% uh, visible, just like so. And once that dries down again, that's going to create a really nice sort of tone and a really nice uh, built mixture. Um, so we're just going to use the army paint a soft tone across the hair. Um, something that I did forget to mention is the, the headpiece. So the circlet going around this lady's head. Um, I've also painted the Retributor armor gold so that it matches the headpiece to the trim of her dress, giving her a nice little bit of a, a, a color mixture, just a, a nice tone together. And uh, the soft tone can go over that gold as well as the hair, so don't worry too much about that. So once we've done that part we've got a very 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 difficult part indeed so we're going to try to paint the, uh, the, the, the the necklace and this is very very fiddly and very small as you'll notice I'm trying to use my hands as close together as I can to get as much um, stability as I can and I'm using a very 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 fine brush for this so I'm just trying to slowly build that up on the um, on the areas that are just poking out a little. Uh, take your time with this, this stage because this is a very difficult stage indeed, especially because of how small these miniatures are. And you'll see I'm just trying my very best, almost like in some ways kind of dry brushing, but just trying to catch the very edges of that um, necklace with my brush and we used a Vallejo bloody red for that. I mean you can use a mixture of different reds um, if you're a Citadel user uh, Mephiston red would be a great red for that. Um, so yeah. Moving back to the hair and now that the wash is dried we're just going to do a very light dry brush of the gold yellow and once the gold yellow is dried and done we're then going to put a Vallejo moon yellow as well just to the very 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 tips and edges just to give it a little bit of depth between the shade, the mid-tone and the highlight and as with dry brushing always less is more so just make sure to do a little bit at a time and build up from there there's no need to go too extreme so looking back at the necklace we're just going to be very very careful to put a small small soft tone from the army painter across that necklace shade um, try your best not to get that onto the skin soft tone is quite forgiving on skin and this is why i've used the soft tone because it will tie that red into the skin um, so don't be too worried if you get a little bit on, just use a little bit of water and paint it off. And that should be the princess done. So I'm going to move on quickly now to the frog, and this one's going to be very, very, very quick paint job for you, just to give you an idea as to what colours that I've used. So for the base colours, I'm going to use a Vallejo Goblin Green, because he looks like a goblin kind of frog. And the Goblin Green is a really... Um, it's a nice tone, it's not too bright, it's not too dark, as you'll see when it's dry here. And then sticking with the same colours, I'm going to use gold yellow for the eyes. So we're just going to paint, instead of the whites of the frog's eyes, the frog itself has that nice big yellow eyes. Um, don't be too worried if you paint a little bit outside, because you can fix that up with the goblin green. Just like so. So I'm just trying to be careful, trying not to get too much of the yellow on parts of the green. But as I say, you can fix that anyway, so it's not the end of the world if you do get some of it on there. It may take uh, one or two layers just to get over any of the green that might be sitting inside of the eye. And then sticking with the army painter shades, we're just going to use a soft tone right across the hole of this miniature. So we're going to cover the whole frog, and this will tie that yellow and green colour around the eyes together, as you'll notice. If you put this in too much of a, a, a splodge just across the top, then just use your brush and manipulate it around the miniature as much as possible. The Army Painter uh, washes are really good for this because they're not too watery, so you can manipulate and move them around quite a lot. 
and he seems to have a lot of little warts and all sorts on his back so we'll, we'll have some fun painting this guy up now. So once you've done that you go back to your goblin green as always going back to the mid mid tone the middle color and what I'm doing around the face and around the lips is I'm just painting some really fine lines down so we're following the lips uh, and the face down so that it gives an element or an illusion of creases so kind of like what we do with the clothing and with the dress on the princess we're just going to paint those lines straight down around the mouth because then it'll give him a little bit of an illusion of cracks and um, creases around his lips because we don't want that color to be too flat if it's too flat then it won't have much character so we're going to try and, and, and build up some character that way now for the warts and things on the back you've got two choices you can either paint them individually like I am or you can dry brush it and it'll work in practically the same way whatever's quickest or whatever's easiest for you myself I wanted to paint them rather than dry brush them because I didn't want the miniature to look too rough I'd rather the miniature and the colors blend together a little bit but again that is purely personal choice that is up to you so for our highlighting, we're going to go back to that goblin green, but we're just going to mix a 50-50 mixture of the scorpion green from Vallejo as well. Scorpion green is a very bright green colour. It's a lot like Citadel's moot green. If you're a Citadel user, you'll probably know what that is. And again, just build in those lines to create an element of creases and create a little bit of character out of his lips and his face so that it's not all one flat colour. And by doing this, this should give us the shade, the mid-tone, the highlight and give it a little bit of character and creases to it as well without it being just a flat face. You know, I mean, take your time with this. You could be as, as, as slow or as, as um, detailed as you like. You could be as fast as you like. It's completely up to you. Um, I like to do this kind of um, brushwork where you see some of the lines underneath because it gives a, an element of character to your, your miniatures and your painting as well. You can really see that it's been hand painted, that it's not too blended together and it's not too um, manufactured, which you can sometimes get from like an airbrush if the blend is very smooth and things like that. So it's nice to have your own style and things and uh, it's all personal choice. So once you've done the green, just move back and add uh, uh, another layer of gold yellow back into the eyes just to make those eyes pop and stick out. And then once you've done the yellow and that is dry, what you want to try and do is just use a black, any black. I mean, I'm using a Vallejo black. You can use a Citadel black. You can use an army painter black. And you just want to try and paint like a, a line through the eye like so. Um, you know, try and be straight with it. But again, it, it doesn't have to be perfect because nothing in life is perfect. And with nature, things can be a little bit um, strange and unique as well. And apologies about the camera being a little bit out of focus here. But as I said, these miniatures are very small. And what I'm just going to do with this is I'm using a white. Um, and again, you can use any white. And I'm just trying, instead of painting, to just dab the very, very tip of the paintbrush into that black part there with white. And the reason why we're doing that is because that's gonna create almost like a little white reflection in his eye where the light is, you see there? Just like so. And that is it. There is our frog with his little reflective eyes and his creased lips, which looks really cool and really individual. And there then is our princess. And a nice bright pastel blue dress and golden hair. So, as always my friends, thank you very much for watching, I hope that you enjoyed this video, and I will see you next time.